Okay, let's start. So let me introduce my colleague Vladimir Kuklin. He's a principal deployment engineer and, tech and fuel uh, technical lead at Mirantis. And let me introduce Sergey Galvatyuk, our senior deployment engineer at Mirantis. And today I would like to tell you how we fought for OpenStack high availability. Apparently this battle is still going on, but we have some good results. So we'd like to share details how we achieved this while working on Mirantis OpenStack and fuel projects. Okay, sorry guys. Some technical issues. Let me. Wait. Let's switch. Them. So it's not rotating. Let me. Let me. So let me once again. I don't see. Okay, guys. Sorry, some technical issues. So. Oh, yeah, so. Full screen. Okay, so uh, before we start talking about OpenStack and its com components individually, uh, let's define high availability and what kind of high availability this talk is related to. So, uh, high availability, as you all you know, is a characteristic of a system to retain high availability of service even if it is exposed to failures. So in this talk, we are covering only a single failure of a component at a single point in time. We don't cover force majeure events or uncommon physical destruction, not deterioration of hardware. Um. Okay, here is a classical diagram of OpenStack. So what's the main problem of th uh, this? So uh, the main problem that you should have uh, high availability for all components. So in reality, you should have at least two copies of each component. However, uh, I would suggest to have at least three copies to avoid uh, split brain scenarios that may arise. So uh, uh, all components should have uh, uh, own healing mechanism or can be under uh, arbitrary control such as pacemaker or zookeeper. So uh, we are not covering no, data center high availability in this talk. We're talking only about OpenStack. So what do we need to provide HA for OpenStack? So first of all, we need to provide highly available networking connectivity. In our project, we have support for almost all types of bondings, including Linux and OpenVSwitch. So for database, we chose MySQL with Galera, and we achieved really good results optimizing management of it by uh, use of pacemaker. So MQP is also a crucial component of OpenStack architecture. Uh, so the death of one controller should not affect uh, service availability at any time. So in order to achieve this, we had to you know, alter significantly uh, deployment workflow of RabbitMQ along with OpenStack messaging code. Uh, and also, we had some issues with memcached. To we had, didn't have it didn't work with, you no, know, de death of particular uh, memcached instances. So we had to do some stuff about it. Um, for storage availability, one can choose you know proprietary uh, solutions like EMC or NetApp. 
uh, or fault tolerant software defined storage. We concentrated our efforts on Ceph, and it's working, working pretty well. Uh, also, API services should be load balanced, and they should redirect requests to a live nodes when something goes wrong. And for, for Neutron, you need to uh, elaborate each solution that um, mi migrates all the entities from dead agents to alive agents. And also for heat and telemetry, you also need to um, ensure that agents can fail over safely from one controller to another controller. Oh, here so, Galera. Uh, why Galera? Sometimes I hear from people that Galera is too complex and DRBD is an easy solution that is enough for MySQL uh, reliability. Uh, however, uh, you cannot scale up really well with DRBD uh, as you have uh, only two instances. So, uh, what about master-slave replication? Uh, master-slave replication is really good, well, uh, well-known technology, uh, and there is no big difference between uh, Galera and master-slave replication in terms of OpenStack reliability. So uh, <coughs> here uh, you so going back. So he here you can see uh, a classical uh, diagram we have uh, in Fuel. So all services communicate with. Uh, database via HA proxy uh, and HA proxy high availability is based on uh, virtual IP which is mo moving from one uh, to another HA proxy in case of problems. So, however, you can see uh, that all communications go to one HA proxy. Uh, as you know, uh, as was stated yesterday by uh, Peter Boris uh, from Percona and J pipes from Mirantis that uh, OpenStack services uh, have some problems as uh, they use select for update statements and don't have a retry mechanism for failed transactions. So, um, MySQL improvements. So, we focused uh, on MySQL and upgraded MySQL to 5.6.11. Uh, uh, so that uh, helped us to resolve many stability issues we have. Also, we uh, use uh, the latest uh, Galera module. So uh, for uh, snapshot state transfer, we moved from uh, MySQL to uh, my, uh, uh, we moved to extra backup, and we got really good results as uh, uh, we. We can do really large uh, database uh, uh, synchronization during uh, snapshot state transfer or incremental transfer. Uh, for uh, HA proxy, uh, we added simple checks uh, via uh, XNED to, to perform uh, simple checks against database to determine uh, where we have a database uh, sync or donor or, or the sync state. So, in case when we have don't know the sync state, we uh, HA proxy is not communicating to that server. Uh, so, also we added MySQL Galera to pacemaker control. However, our previous OCF script uh, was not mature enough, enough and had uh, some technical issues and didn't reassemble cluster in many conditions. So uh, we, uh, we wrote a completely new uh, script uh, that helped us to resolve many issues and uh, doesn't require any human uh, interactions to assemble a Galera cluster. So um, how it works? So the general idea is to get the most recent data from, uh, from all components. And uh, uh, MySQL... Uh, we get uh, this data from uh, uh, from a global transaction ID of each node, and we save uh, this data in uh, pacemaker uh, cluster information base. Uh, 
Uh, however, in case of problems, we can get uh, this data from grass state file. Uh, and uh, when we have all this data, we can start a primary component uh, really easily with the most recent data. So, uh, however, uh, we also added OCF script as clone based, so we don't need to create uh, any primitives uh, on new controllers. Next slide. It's rabbit. Okay, so uh, when we started working on our RabbitMQ cluster resilience, we found that uh, RabbitMQ cluster uh, behavior is not very obvious and clear. And for, for instance, when you restart RabbitMQ, you know, do hot reset, and it just becomes very vulnerable to race conditions. And there is not much things you can do about it. So what we did, we wrote an OCF script that it is really complex and has really you know, uh, complex logic uh, and that utilizes uh, pacemaker master slave resources and notification mechanisms. So on this diagram you can see what is what is doing. So when we do start of the service, we just start beam virtual machine. We don't, do not do anything. Then when pacemaker relax master node, for instance, let it be node one, we put this information to pacemaker database and start Redbit application server. Then pacemaker sends notifications to all the other nodes and they join master node and also start their application. And our status, uh, com status function in this script is always checking beam, rabbit, and whether all the nodes are clustered with the particular master. And if something goes wrong, for example, we cannot start application server for RabbitMQ because of these race conditions and you know this application trying to connect non-existing stuff, we just reset it completely. Then speaking of uh, Oslo messaging, uh, initially we had HA proxy serving requests for RabbitMQ, but it was not scalable solution. So we were very happy when Oslo messaging was merged and we could use you know, several hosts in the Rabbit host parameter. But the problem was that uh, it was not working with connection failures. This, there, were no, uh, there was no support for hardbeats for MQP, and connections were hanging for, no, for a long time, and nothing was happening. Consumers were not receiving messages, producers were not publishing messages. So we took first community hardbeat implementation and tried to use it. It was broken. We tried to use short kernel TCP keep alive to kill connections you know, in a minute after they became, become idle. This also didn't help. But the good news is that our guys finally elaborated a fix. It is already in Miranda's OpenStack and it is already on review on OpenStack.org. So if you think that you need Oslo messaging with hardware support, please vote for it. So. There is nothing interesting to say about high availability of uh, OpenStack services. Uh, we use pretty standard way with the active active backend of HA proxy. So uh, with active active backends, uh, uh, some of parameters are tuned to digest uh, production uh, load, uh, and uh, we have pretty good results. However, uh, we uh, put some services under pacemaker uh, control, such as heat or uh, accelerometer, uh, and uh, we moved uh, HA proxy uh, to separate namespace using standard mechanism with uh, VATH plus RP proxy uh, to eliminate uh, hand connections. So Keystone, we strongly believe that uh, temporary data should be kept in key value storage. So, uh, and in previously we switched Keystone to use memcached instead of MySQL. Uh, and uh, high availability of that solution was not really good enough. So, uh, and we decided to improve that uh, solution. So, uh, we used standard Python uh, memcached library, which is broken. Uh, as it uh, which is broken, and we tried to switch to a Python libmc library, 
uh, which is really good. However, uh, it's uh, written in C and it's not even let safe. So we decided to write uh, a new uh, driver uh, and our developer, Yuri Torodai, uh, wrote a new dr driver uh, with pull off connection to memcache server uh, with some logic to detect de dead servers. Uh, but, however, we still have some problems uh, with memcache uh, as uh, logic for choosing a memcache server for sharding is still broken and uh, uh, we have fix for it uh, which is on review control. Okay, speaking of Neutron, well, there is nothing interesting about Neutron server which is under HA proxy. But it, the devil is in details when you try to manage Neutron agents safely. First of all, they leave a lot of artifacts, like IP addresses, namespaces, running processes, and so on. So in our CF scripts for Neutron agents, we needed to clean up all this stuff when we do start and stop actions. The second uh, thing that you need to do is to reschedule entities like routers for three agents and Neutron um, networks for DHCP agents and well, eventually, services for load balancers as a service, which, which doesn't contain any you know, opportunity to re reschedule services right now. Uh, so our guys are working. So we were using API of Neutron, because there are API methods to do this, right in OCF script. But our guys are working on API handler and rescheduling mechanisms for Neutron. Currently, there is some kind of automatic rescheduling uh, code already, but we tested it. And actually, it had problems with MQP failover. So, in case of it was not working in case of failover, and this is really no, it's a pity. So, Seth, uh, however, in fuel we use uh, pretty common way with Seth with uh, uh, monitor on controllers, and we have uh, OSD for each disk on uh, Seth nodes. So, however, our developers uh, worked hard to implement live migration uh, and we added some code to mm, OpenStack to have live migration. Uh, however, we also added uh, uh, some code for, uh, uh, for uh, object and image based storage uh, shard, uh, sh sharding. So, uh, and Right now, Ceph works uh, pretty fine, and all code is merged uh, to OpenStack. So, and now it comes to deployment. Um, when you want to deploy all the aforementioned stuff, you know, in the, in the cluster, uh, it is not really easy to do. So we had a lot of things uh, to r write for our deployment workflow, and these were. Uh, we need to, these were crossing pace micro manifests originally uh, created by Puppet Labs, but we needed to fork it and add other stuff to there. So uh, there is a HA proxy with configuration directory support to make it work in a granular manner along with manifests for Puppet OpenStack modules and also uh, custom OCF scripts for virtual IPs and uh, HA proxy to run them in a separate namespace to avoid the problems that were mentioned earlier. So there are three parts, three slides about deployment. So what we needed to do, uh, we wanted constraint support for Puppet because we needed them. We, in order to run master slave and clone resources, we needed to write code to support them. And in order not to modify all the manifests, all the Puppet manifests for OpenStack deployment, we also needed to provide a uh, service provider for Pacemaker for, for Puppet. So, uh, it, what it does right now, it parses uh, local resource manager of pacemaker database, uh, waits for status change, respects timeouts, and monitor comments sent by pacemaker. And what is really uh, good, that in order to support it, you just need to change service provider and you know, add some uh, to two or three stances to make vanilla Puppet manifests work with OpenStack HA. And also, in order to support really complicated um, OCF scripts like for RabbitMQ and Galera, we needed to switch from sh default upstream schedule approach when you generate a 
copy of database of pacemaker configuration and then apply it again because it was overwriting attributes that are used by OCF scripts. So we moved to pacemaker XML patches and it is working pretty well. Um, so as soon as we just got it deployable, we moved to stability. The problem was that our service provider was uh, triggering actions globally uh, and you know, it was affecting deployment stability. So we switched to pacemaker asymmetric cluster when er where everything is stopped by default. And when we do start of services, we enable them by putting zero location constraint. Then, in order to make all these actions finally local-wise, we also modify uh, status method of provider to uh, make it dependent on resource type. For clones, we check if it is started locally, and for primitive resources, we check if it is started somewhere in the cluster. Also, we had to tune SQL drivers, timeouts, and all the other stuff. And also, we, we needed to introduce short kernel TCP keep lives because there are still, uh, hang we need to kill hanging connections as fast as possible, not after two hours. So, speaking of HA scalability, uh, after we won this stability fight, we moved to another one. We wanted to easily scale our cluster with controllers. And this is what we faced. Well, most of our customers do not have multicast configured in their data centers. I don't know why. It's 2014, but it's fact. And we had to switch to unicast by default. And because of this, we had to restart CoraSync each time we want to add a new controller. And in, in order to do this, we uh, altered CoraSync manifest to put Pacemaker into maintenance mode, because this is the only way to do this in zero version of pacemaker uh, plugin. And also we had to add, uh, we had to limit parallel controllers deployment uh, because you know, not to exhaust Galera, uh, Galera donor nodes. Okay. So testing. Testing doesn't come at easy cost. So uh, we implemented a special library uh, which is tiny piece of uh, libvirt uh, based orchestration so and we uh, perform uh, our destructive tests uh, on daily basis uh, using that library so uh, we spin up virtual environment uh, with all services we need and we start performing uh, destructive tests and uh, it's integrated with our ci and we have uh, results uh, once we have uh, any problems with HA. So uh, we wrote special uh, uh, own framework, which is Fuel OSTF. However, we also run Tempest and Rally. OK, so speaking of results, what we currently support in from HA's point of view, we uh, handle single failure at a time. Either it is controller reset. Also, if you reset all the controllers, they reassemble automatically. Uh, it, it may be network partitioning, it may be a failure of MQP, DB, database node, or particular OS service. So air, all, all these test cases, are, all these use cases are covered. So, uh, our, oh, Sergey, this is your part. Okay, so current plans and uh, challenges. So. Uh, we need to implement uh, multiple rights for Galera. So, as you know, uh, many OpenStack services still use select for update on, or doesn't have uh, retry on failed, uh, on failed transaction. So, we are working with our developers to push uh, this code to upstream uh, to, allow, to allow multiple rights to all Galera nodes instead of one. Okay, and the same goes for VRP and DVR, we need to f test them because we are not really sure that they work completely fine right now. Uh, we are also going to introduce f support for fencing for pacemaker using all the types of fencing devices. Um, also, we wanted to implement uh, centralized event-driven failure and evocations using common monitoring systems. Memcached still needs some polishing. Um, we also want to concentrate on research of using ZeroMQ instead of 
MQP, or maybe combination of MQP and zero MQ for uh, messaging. And also, as we have already worked in HA tests framework that can you know test your installation completely. Uh, we're going to as, as soon as we uh, I think it will be really soon. As soon as we provide the ability to deploy uh, multi-node HA environments from particular vanilla OpenStack comments, I think it will come you know, less than, than, than a month. We're going to introduce our CI gate into OpenStack Jenkins to see if any particular commit is breaking HA installation. Okay. So if you're interested, you can always check out uh, our project, our project's wiki page. Actual deployment is done by a few libraries sub-project. And we periodically write down all HA fixes into other part documents. So you can check it out and find whether there is something use useful for you. And you can always contact us at RC field dev channel or OpenStack at OpenStack mailing please. And finally, I would like to thank all of the guys who are working hard to make this HA story work. This is Alexander Didenko, Bogdan Dabrela, Roman Padalaka, Yuri Terodai, Serge Milikan, Stan Lagoon, Sergei Vasilenko, Matthew Mozeson, Dmitry Lin, Dmitry Borodainko, Ryan Mo, Andrew Woodward, and Sir Lapua. I don't see her. Tatiana Leontovich, Igor Katko, Artyom Panchenko, and Andrei Stazinski. And all of you for your attention. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you. So if you have questions, just ask, we just... Yeah, we have 14 minutes. Please raise your hand and... Yeah. Could, could you please go to the microphone? I think this session is recorded. Yeah, so... Yeah. Right. Uh, first of all, uh, guys, uh, Mirantis fuel, fuel is awesome. And good job, Thank guys. So Thank you. Uh, my question is around uh, the roles uh, that you provide, especially your controller nodes. All your API services, database, and network, everything run on the controller nodes. Have you got any plans to split that controller role? The answer is yes. We're going to, no, it's our deployment architecture limitation right now, but I think in half a year we will be able to deploy any particular configuration and combination of roles you want in any role, on any node. So. Thank you. I've got another question. This is on your logging. Uh, all the logs go on to your uh, fuel master. Have you got any plans to split that logging and send somewhere else? Actu actually, uh, in fuel master, we have option to send uh, all logs to remote server. So we can use it even right now. But yes, we are going to redesign our log architecture, and um, uh, guys from fuel library are working on that. So. Yes, sir. Uh, you mentioned about uh, Ceph live migration. So, uh, how did you guys manage to do that? Okay, I think the best or person who can uh, explain uh, that is Andrew Woodward. He okay. actually worked on this part. So, Andrew, so I'll, so I'll catch you later, or you can you can tell it right now if you want. Um, so yeah. Uh, so you mentioned something about the pacemaker catalog and some way how you can track uh, what services and in which order they start using the pacemaker. So you read information from the pacemaker database somehow to just track this? You mean about pacemaker puppet service provider? Yes. Yeah, we're just parsing XML of f from pacemaker and parsing local resource manager part. And no. It's, it is eventually, well, it is completely based on the code that, you know, there is in P engine that just shows you all the information about how, what, in which state services are, and CRM and PCS are showing this information. So it is re rewritten in Ruby, and it just does the same stuff. So you basically, to start the services in a certain order, you, you parse the uh, pacemaker XML file. We, we parse it to, to derive, you know, it's 
properties and status. Yeah. Uh, in order to start, we just put pacemaker cluster into asymmetric mode and then put zero location constraint. So by default, it is not started anywhere. And then we unbend the node. And then pacemaker starts the service and we wait for it to, to start or to stop, whatever you want to do. And see whether it is, no. It's just, it is working like a regular service, like an init service, so we just need to alter a tiny piece of puppet manifests. All right, thanks. However, uh, there are still some tricky logics, as you cannot notify pacemaker uh, just to ro load one server, service, as it will reload in all, all nodes. So we just put constraints, uh, or just ban one node, uh, reload service and go, uh, and uh, then we add it back to cluster. Yeah. So just to eliminate such issues across all controllers. All right. Okay. Thanks. More questions? We still have like five minutes for questions. So. I think Fabio is surprised. Yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, yeah. yes, we have plans, and we are discussing with uh, Puppet Lab community to add to uh, Puppet. Uh, yes, we will be adding. So, but uh, uh, on um, we c you can actually use our OCF scripts even right now. It's in our code. It's uh, open open source. Yes. Yes. The answer, the, the is, answer yes. is yes. So we are trying to be as open source as possible. <laughs> oh, Sergey, it is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it just went sleeping. <laughs> okay. Thank you, guys. Anyone? Thank you.